Can you guys believe that one week from tomorrow is Thanksgiving Day? I mean, seriously, where did 2013 go? The holidays are already upon us. You know what, that's okay though, I love the holidays. And I think people like the holidays for various reasons. Some like it because they get to spend quality time with their family and friends. Others like it because they get out of work and they get to rest and recharge and come back for the new year rejuvenated. But a part about the holidays that we often overlook is how many calories we consume over the holidays. Now fear not, I'm not here to preach eat this, not that, and I'm certainly, for the love of Saint Nick himself, going to stand up here with a straight face today and tell you to not indulge over the holidays. I know I will be having my fair share of eggnog and snickerdoodles over the coming weeks. It is my goal, however, though, to inform you about some of the misconceptions that I think our society has about calories. And it's my hope that by the end of this speech, you'll feel a little bit more empowered to make informed decisions throughout the holiday season. Let's get right into it. We have, as a society, become obsessed with an equation. And it's an equation I think you're all familiar with. It says that the change in body weight is equal to calories in minus calories out. Or put another way, if you take in more calories than you burn, you're gonna gain weight. And if you burn more calories than you take in, you're gonna lose weight. It's by the same logic that one could assume that if you want to keep a stable weight, you've got this, you need this equation to net out to zero. In other words, you need your calories in to be equal to calories out. Pretty straightforward. But does this really tell us why we gain or lose weight? I'll let you be the judge as we dive a little deeper into this equation. First, we'll start with calories in. So how do you calculate how many calories that you consume over a given period of time? Well, for one, you have to be a di diligent calorie counter, meaning you have to be really good at logging and tracking everything you eat and drink, and not only what you eat and drink, but how much of it drink. This can be a very cumbersome process. Let me give you an example. How many calories are in one cup of rice? Well, I guess that depends on which of the 40,000 species of rice you're talking about. And I guess it also depends on if it's a medium grain, a long grain, or a short grain. Furthermore, is the calories that refer to the cup of rice, is it raw or is it cooked rice? And if it's cooked, is it fried, boiled, or steamed? You see, all these variables determine how many calories are in that one cup of rice. It can be very complicated. Furthermore, the calorie on the side of a food label, the number, is really not accurate. It's meant to be an estimation or an approximation at best and not a precise figure. So having said all of that, you can already tell it's very difficult to calculate how many calories you actually consume. The troubling thing is it's not nearly as difficult as calculating how many you burn. Now when we talk about burning calories, the first thing that you're gonna think of is that top point, exercise. Obviously we burn calories when we work out, but there are a few other ways that we burn calories. One is our daily expenditure. Right now, I'm burning calories as I sit here, or as I stand here talking to you today. You walking to this room, you burn calories. Walking to your car later today, you'll burn calories. That's part of the daily expenditure. Also, believe it or not, when you eat food, your body requires energy, thus calories, to digest and process that food. The irony is that while you're eating calories, you're also burning calories. And then finally, just because you're lying down on a couch or sleeping at night, doesn't mean that your body hasn't stopped, that your body stopped working. It still requires calories and is burning calories. So what am I getting at with all this? Well, as I just explained, on the left side of the equation, it's pretty difficult to calculate, and on the right side of the equation, it's virtually impossible to calculate. So what I'm getting at is it's impossible to match calories in to calories out. So the question then needs to become, why are we not all overweight? You see, to illustrate this example, if I were to be in a 20 calorie surplus, meaning I take in 20 more calories than I burn every single day for the next 20 years, I'd gain 40 pounds. Does that make sense? Of course not. You see, this equation is not meant to tell us why we gain or lose weight. And it's also got another problem in that it's agnostic to the foods that we eat. Meaning, this equation says that a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. It doesn't matter what type of food you eat. But is that the case? Another example. Let's pretend that we have two identical people. Identical. They have the same genes. Maybe they're identical twins. We know that over the course of, let's call it 10 years, they're gonna consume each 2,700 calories a day. Well, that equation that we just had up would say that 
they're going to have the same weight over the course of 15 years, 10 years, right? Well, let's think about that for a second. What if they each had 2,700 calories a day, but the only thing different between them was the foods that they ate? So person A on the left is having 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat in the form of vegetables, fruit, lean meat, fish, nuts, and avocado. Meanwhile, the person on the right is having the same amount of calories, but in the form of Domino's pepperoni pizza on a daily basis. Could we actually sit here and think, from a metabolic standpoint, that the body is gonna do the same thing? That they're gonna weigh the exact same over the course of 15 years? When this person's eating pepperoni pizza, and this person is eating vegetables, fruit, lean meats, and fish? Of course not. You see, we, we already know, it's a fact, it's biology, it's science, that the body processes different foods differently. We metabolize fruits and vegetables much differently than we metabolize processed sugars and starches. But yet, that equation says that, we, that these people would be identical over 15 years. You see, this equation was never meant to be the end-all be-all as to why we gain or lose weight. You see, gaining and losing weight really has nothing to do with mathematics. It has nothing to do with calories in or calories out. It's a function of biology. When we eat food, there's a cascade of processes that goes off, and different things happen when you eat different food. A calorie is simply a unit of measurement. It's a way to measure energy, just like a mile measures distance. That's all it is. That's all it is. So over the next few weeks in the holidays, I'd encourage you, don't con forget about the calories. Calories in, calories out really has nothing to do with why we gain or lose weight. The food choices, though, and the actual foods that we're eating do over the course of time. Granted, I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination to not indulge with some eggnog and some snickerdoodle cookies.